Welcome to what I want to call a complete approach to engine condition testing. Whenever we're working on a vehicle of any kind, a relative compression test should be performed. We want to determine engine condition. And of course, here we just connected our high amp probe and we are connected to our Pico box and we're going to run a compression, a relative compression test. This is a known good uh, pattern, all the uniform pumps. Whereas this one is missing compression every fourth cylinder. This is a four cylinder. We've uh, used the rulers here to point out that uh, we're missing compression on one cylinder. Since there's no resistance for the piston to push against, no compression, amperage requirement from the battery is low and stays low until we have a, the next cylinder that does have compression or resistance to push against increases the amperage. So every time a piston comes up and the crankshaft experiences resistance, we have um, a uh, current value, or in this, in this case, a waveform that displays when we have low resistance and when we have good resistance, as we should have with each cylinder, as shown on the previous example. In the past, we used to use vacuum gauges to help determine the condition of an engine, but it's become an outdated type of test. Notice that this uh, vac uh, vacuum gauge in the bottom corner is a steady pulse. This typically indicates a valve issue or valve problem. When a relative compression test has helped us identify an engine mechanical problem, then we have options to perform other tests, a cranking compression, a wet test, and our cylinder leakage test. These tests help us again confirm engine mechanical condition, which is going to be the focus of this video. Other types of misfires also relate to what we call the engine management system. For example, if a misfire only occurs at idle, it's likely a vacuum leak, a cam timing issue because a belt was put on wrong or we got a bad cam phaser. EGR valve could be stuck open or we just simply have uh, an engine that's got an uh, open thermostat and is throwing a P0128 code. These can cause misfires, uh, making things rough only at idle. If the misfire occurs at all engine speeds, we need to determine obviously which cylinder it is. And is it an ignition problem, spark plug, coil, etc., or is it an air fuel ratio problem, a bad injector, mass airflow situation, etc.? Let's discuss a few methods of how to isolate a cylinder that is misfiring. We can sometimes use a scan tool, which we'll demonstrate first here, or we might have to manually uh, disconnect a battery, or a, a spark plug cable and ground it, disconnect a fuel injector, or even a disconnect an ignition coil, once again to confirm which cylinder or if a particular cylinder has the misfire condition. Other way perform a cylinder balance test to verify which cylinder might be misfiring. Find on a scan tool functional tests. That's the key word or, or usually the what it's known by. This one, this vehicle here allows us to go to an injector balance test. And here we go. It's going to pulse and the, the injector's off. It's telling me you're going to see a dip in engine RPM, which is what I want to see with each injector. Cylinder one. Look at that. Okay. Cylinder one is complete. Cylinder, cylinder two just completed. Cylinder three just got through testing. Cylinder four, let's look at it. Smooth, nothing to rock here. Can you hear it? Now it came back, now it's gonna cut out. Yeah. 
I think it did all six cylinders. We could have determined if there wasn't an engine RPM dip, which cylinder for sure is not firing. Here's another option of doing a cylinder balance test. This was more common back in the 80s and 90s. Sometimes confirm a misfire. This might have to be done even today. Back in the day, they taught us to use a little chunk of vacuum hose on the ignition coils. Of course, this is a uh, distributorless or coil pack type uh, ignition. So, you just get a piece of vacuum hose, and that's all I've done here. You can put one on each of these six spark plug towers, or I should say coil towers, and listen to the engine dip or drop in RPM. Got a good spark in the coil, obviously, but listen to the drop. Now it won't light the test light, there's not near enough current. A lot of voltage, but not enough current to turn on that bulb. Another way, redneck way, you simply poke right through the boot and hit the tower. Hear that? Now, some folks would really get mad at me poking holes. The boots are soft, they won't make a they won't leave a voltage leak or allow voltage to leak. That's another method to do a cylinder balance or power balance test. Again, I use this to confirm a misfire. Again, these are some methods to verify which cylinder has the misfire condition. Back to engine condition testing. When it's determined a cylinder has, or which cylinder has a mechanical problem, of course, we have the tests uh, or options to perform a cranking compression test. We could even follow with a wet com uh, cranking compression test, or we do have the option to get even more detailed information with a cylinder leakage test. The whole point, the whole question with these tests helps us answer the question, can the engine be restored to good engine performance? And of course, if we have a bad cylinder with a mechanical problem, we cannot. Let's now discuss the principles of a cranking compression test. Typically, only uh, we need we only need to test the suspected cylinder that might have low compression. Uh, we should disable the engine from starting so it'll crank over only, right? We do like to open the throttle plate or hold it open while we're cranking so that as much air as possible can enter the cylinder to give the cylinder a, a chance to build some kind of air pressure. Pay attention to the first puff, okay? Meaning uh, the first needle pulse or puff should be about 50% of the final uh, test. We'll demonstrate this. When cranking the engine over, be consistent. Five or six cranks. Again, we'll demonstrate this. Uh, I do want to mention we should admit, we should have a, a cranking compression test value of at least 100 psi at this altitude, 4,900 feet above sea level. They say at sea level, you should measure a minimum of 110 psi. Um, the whole point of a cranking compression test is to see if the cylinder conceal or, or hold pressure. Uh, that's the whole point because the purpose of holding pressure, of course, builds compression. If there is no compression in the cylinder, it cannot preheat the air-fuel mixture. And if the air-fuel mixture does not get preheated to a certain point, 300 and some degrees, I believe, the uh, air-fuel mixture will not be able to ignite. Spark alone Here's the principle. Spark alone will not be enough to ignite the mixture. It has to be preheated in order to ignite and have a combustion event. Let's demonstrate this.
So we've got our compression gauge here. The one we've got the proper hose that will fit into the cylinder. We can compare it, match it to our spark plug to make sure that it's going to be the right one that fits in correctly. Another thing I always want to make sure is that the Schrader valve is inside of the of our hose. Uh, when we're using a leak down test, there is no Schrader valve in. So we want to make sure that we didn't get these confused or that there is a Schrader valve in when we're doing compression tests. Then we'll simply take our, our hose and hook it up to our gauge and crank our engine. So we'll screw this into our number one cylinder to start off with. <clears throat> Zoom in a little bit. We just got that seated. We don't need to tighten it down, torque it down super tight. And then hook up our, our gauge to the hose. And now we can right there. Now we can watch our gauge as we crank it over. We'll 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 do five hits on that. One, two, three, four, five. Good. There we can see we're about that's good. We have about 145. Let's release it. Okay. We're gonna look at our first puff on this one also. I didn't pay attention to that. So there we go. Good, we had about uh, 75, maybe about six, 65 to 75 on our first puff, which was about half of what, of what we had there. So now if we wanted to, now we can go to our uh, next cylinder. Now, but again, yeah, but, but again, we're only gonna measure compression of a suspected cylinder. Now I've had, I've had some really screw these hoses in tight and they're hard to get out if you do. There's an O-ring on there that will seal. So you don't need to crank that down. Just let it seat up against that, against the, the, uh, your spark plug hole there. Okay. We'll watch our second cylinder and compare that. We had about the same there. Our first puff was probably about uh, 65 to 70, and we're reading at about 145-ish there, so that looks good. Let's now point out the principles of a wet compression test. When a cylinder does test low on a cranking compression test, we have the option of performing a wet test. Again, this, this is not necessary. It's kind of a nice to know thing. But to do the test, we'll add a little bit of oil, a tablespoon or 15 milliliters, whichever you understand best. We will retest the same cylinder. The pressure should raise at least 30 or 40 psi because oil in and of itself is going in there and it's taking up some space. Uh, and we'll make the combustion chamber a little smaller. Liquids are not compressible, right? But the point is, the oil goes in there and makes a temporary seal around the rings against the cylinder wall. So the whole point of the wet test is to determine compression ring condition. If the readings improve, like I say, 30 or 40 PSI or more, usually 50 or 60, right? Then we do have a, a piston ring issue. If the test only increases 20 or 10, 15, 20 PSI, or maybe even not at all, we're likely dealing with valves or a head gasket issue. Let's demonstrate this test. All right, now we're gonna demonstrate the uh, wet compression test. What we're gonna do is take some oil and we're gonna squirt it down into the cylinder. We wanna put about a tablespoon of oil into the cylinder. Of course, we don't wanna just pour a tablespoon down, so we use a an oil pump can with a hose on it that we can get it right down into the cylinder past the spark plug threads directly into the cylinder. And so also how much is a tablespoon when we're pumping out so we can just med take a measurement of how many pumps does it take to fill up about a cap full of, of uh, oil into our, uh, uh, this is just off of a oil can. And so uh, that will give us a rough estimate of how many pumps do we need to give to get that tablespoon of oil in. So now we'll uh, take this, 
we know how much to pump and put in there, we will put this directly down into the cylinder. You gotta kind of feel your way past the threads. And now we'll give it a couple of pumps. Now we know we've got that oil in there into our cylinder. Now we'll just continue on like a normal compression test. We'll put our, our, our hose, thread our hose in. Remember, don't do it too tight. And we'll hook up our gauge and we'll make a comparison of what we were before and after. So, here we go. Good. Now look, our first pump was nearly, I think, 80 to 90. And our final, we're looking at uh, 170, approximately. So, even on a good engine, putting that oil in is showing us that uh, we got a better seal with putting that oil in. Plus the fact we've got a liquid in there. And it's amazing just having that little bit of liquid will actually displace some air, right? Uh, not, not displace some air, but some space, which would increase some pressure. So when we're talking an improvement in seal, we're probably talking on a wet compression test, you know, maybe a change of 40 or 50 PSI, 30 PSI minimum, because we changed the loan close on, to 30. On a good engine. On a good engine. Excellent. Excellent. That's wet test. Let's now discuss cylinder leakage test. Of course, this uh, is a test we would only perform on a cylinder that read low in compression. You don't need to cylinder leakage test an entire engine. Um, so we'll, we'll move on from there. Again, this, is a not, this test is not what we call a necessary test, but if the goal is to make an engine repair, if the vehicle has enough value about it that a cylinder head job could be done, um, then this is nice to know information. Uh, the whole point of the test is to find out where the leak is coming from. Why won't the cylinder hold pressure, right? Now, in order to do this test successfully, it's got to be set up correctly. Uh, meaning this, the piston needs to be at top dead compression stroke. It cannot be at top dead exhaust stroke. It's got to be at top dead compression. Ideally, it's good to do this test if the engine has run, say, within the last, you know, 60 minutes or an hour, because this allows oil to be around the rings to help maybe improve uh, seal around the rings. We don't mistakenly think the problem is, is past piston rings. Because we do have five possible areas where leakage can occur. An adjacent cylinder, which would indicate uh, or point to a head gasket issue. Again, a radiator. Uh, if the air is leaking past the head gasket into a cooling passage, then again, that's another type of head gasket leak. If it's leaking past an intake valve, of course, we'll hear it past the throttle plate. If it's leaking past piston or rings, it could be a, a cracked piston or bad rings. If we hear or see the air, we should actually feel and, and verify the air coming out, uh, it's coming out the exhaust pipe. Then of course we have an exhaust valve issue, which in my opinion is, is the most common reason we have a uh, cylinder seal issue. And the cylinder leakage test helps us verify that. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this test. So our gauges, first we're going to start off with the with the hoses. Once again, when we're doing a leak down test. Our hose, we do not want a Schrader valve in our leak down test. That's the Schrader. This one is for compression testing, has the, has the Schrader valve in, so we don't want to use that. That's for compression, this one for leak down. And of course, we want to match it up to our spark plug, make sure that's the right thread and depth so that we can uh, screw into the spark plug hole properly. And then we're going to connect to our to our gauges here. Our gauges, we're going to then bring this up to 100 PSI. We can adjust with this regulator here. We'll show that. 
And on this gauge, snap-on gauge, it tells us here of our 20% uh, how much leakage we have. And it even gives you a green of what's okay. Uh, some gauges do not have that, or simply uh, give us a scale of, of PSI. On this one, uh, our 20%, we would not want to be uh, lower than 80 PSI, which would be lower, uh, lower than, than 20%. So some, some are like this. I, I prefer this one. Makes it easy. With our with our percentages in there, so let's let's go ahead and get started with uh, setting this up. So the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to get to top dead center on our compression stroke. Remember, the piston can be up top dead center on exhaust or top dead center on compression. And so we're going to what I like to do first of all is put our hose in and we are going to uh, crank crank this over till we can feel air coming up. If the exhaust valve is open there will be no air when it's coming up on exhaust stroke. But if it's compression stroke we'll be able to feel air coming out of the hose. So we're going to crank this over and get a little get to where we got air coming out of here. And so uh, let's, let's go ahead and yeah, crank it and we'll... Right there. Let's hold it right there. I think that was compression right there. Should you do it again just to get the effect? Yes. And come around again. Okay. Did you hear, hear and feel that? So let's come around again. Okay. I think that's now, now it's sucking in. Okay. I think, uh, I think that should be good. We're going to crank it by hand so we can get a feel for that now. So if we, sometimes when you're cranking it with the engine as it goes up and down, it, it gives it a, an interesting feel. So, yeah, let's, let's crank it a little bit by hand. So to uh, roll the engine over to get the cylinder up to top dead center, We've taken the wheel off and this cover off here so we can get to the harmonic balancer, which is the crank, or this crank pulley. And so we can put our socket on, on and our ratchet on this crank pulley bolt, and we can crank it over. We can also make a mark. This particular car has a mark already on it, but when we get to top dead center, we can also Make, an, make our own mark if, if this harmonic balancer doesn't have one to reference where top dead center should we need to roll the engine to another cylinder. But simply we're just putting the socket on and we're going to crank the engine over by hand slowly to get it to exact top dead center. If we go too far then we can just back it up. We can just back it up a little bit to where we are exactly at top dead center. Now one thing we're going to do is to make sure we're at top dead center is we can put the screwdriver into the spark plug hole and then crank it slowly and we'll watch as this rises slowly and we can see it come up and then right there stop well we just started coming down so we can back up just a little bit and bring it right up to top dead center then we know we're at top dead center on our compression stroke. So we'll put our hose back in. And then we will hook our gauge. Hook our gauge up to the hose. And now we'll hook compressed air Pressed air in. So we back, this is the regulator, we back that off. Now we'll put our compressed air in. Now we'll adjust this up to 100 psi to see what kind of leakage we have. You can see we're not even to 100% and we're already approaching less 100 psi. 
we can see that we have got almost zero leakage out of this cylinder, which is a, a great engine. So this is how we can see where how much leakage we have in our cylinder. Um, if we did have more than 20% leakage, that's when we would start listening to where is that leak coming from. Good? Yes. Okay. And the five possible areas as to where things can leak, of course, would be out the intake. We haven't disabled anything, but if we was to take off the, uh, you know, air cleaner and feel air, um, another leak place, if it's getting past piston rings, pull a dipstick. You can listen, you can listen into there. That's if we had leakage. Uh, go ahead and take off the radiator in case we had a blown head gasket, right? And that's one of the two places for a blown uh, head gasket, evidence of blown head gasket. If that was bubbling, then that would be uh, a blown head gasket. Or the other possible way a head gasket blows is the adjacent or neighboring cylinder. That's why that spark plug has re been removed from that cylinder as well. Exhaust. And then, of course, the real common one would be go back to the tailpipe and see if any air is coming out the exhaust. In fact, to uh, accelerate or make the air flow really go, don't know if I can do this or not on this setup, but we're going to try. Uh, I personally feel this is a, a restriction. So if I want to have good evidence of air flow, I'll put this right into the cylinder. Now, if the engine rolls over, I wasn't perfectly on top dead. But if I, can get, if I can get this to stay on top dead, because the valve should be closed, right? Go as easy as I can here. <laughs> Let's turn the engine. It's coming out the air cleaner. You can hear it. Yeah. But if I can put shop air in, I can really feel airflow, because that gauge assembly is a restrictor. That concludes cylinder leakage testing. Let's review. The whole purpose of a re relative compression test is to help us determine if engine performance can even be restored. Misfires need to be identified. Do they happen only at idle or are they constant? Cranking compression testing is all about cylinder seal. A wet compression test helps us determine if the piston rings are in good condition. And a cylinder leakage test tells where tells us where compression leak is coming from thanks for watching